Hello and welcome to Girls Empowered. My name is Naomi. My name is Desharnet and thank you for joining us today. Girls Empowered is a show aimed to create conversations about women's daily struggles living in a male-dominated society. Today we will be discussing the topic of body image and eating disorders. Body image is an issue that affects people from all ages and genders, but the media often targets women to fit certain societal standards of beauty. You may ask, why is this such a big deal? Body dissatisfaction is one of the most important risk factors for restrictive dieting, which predicts the onset of eating disorders, like anorexia or bulimia. In fact, the media starts to target elementary school age children through cartoons, movies, and videos that emphasize the importance of being attractive. Sexually objectified images of girls and women in advertisements are most likely to appear in both men and women's magazines. Yet the second most common source of such images is the advertisements in teen magazines directed at adolescent girls. Long-term exposure during childhood and adolescence lays the foundation for the negative effects of media during early adulthood. But body dissatisfaction doesn't just come with media. Evidence shows that girls tend to have friends who are similar to themselves in terms of body dissatisfaction, and that dissatisfaction is predicted by peer conversations about dieting, body consciousness, and thin idolization. Even as those with eating disorders seek help, they still face negative attitudes towards weight and shape by their parents, as well as the overvaluation of thinness that can have a negative effect on the treatment of their children. To talk more in depth on the topic of body image, we are joined today by two youth media producers, David and Ari. David is the host of Spotlight and Ari is the host of YC Weekly. Thank you for joining us today. How are you both? I'm good. I'm so nervous I couldn't eat this today. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Let's take the time to discuss more about the issue of how companies and media portray women, shall we? In 2011, H&M went under fire because the bodies of the women used to model their clothing on their website were computer generated. The digital produced models were very lean and slender, which advertised a standard for how H&M shoppers should look. On this, the company stated, we are doing this to show off the garments. This is done for all garments, not just underwear. It applies for both women's and men's clothing. So hearing about this, how do you think, how do you guys feel about this? Uh. Well, just hearing that study from the 2011s of H&M, it's like, you have to look at it w this way. The main thing is that when people buy the clothes at H&M, they're only buying it for their style and just because they like the way they look or like if you go into like the dressing room or like the outfit stores whatever they call it whew, um <laughs> please bear with me i just had a mcdonald's drink already um <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically they're just trying on the outfit and they say that in themselves that the clothes are just telling them that they have something that they like that they want that they have on on their bodies it's like they like their style because they are born with that style and they've been buying it for a long time or basically et cetera, et cetera, and all that. Um, I feel like because H&M is sort of depicting a certain image to wear their clothes, uh, the ones who cannot fit their clothes, they, they're not so, um, you know, it sort of brings down their self-esteem because it's like yeah. I don't have that H&M image sort of thing. And if you actually go to H&M, they don't have many varieties in their sizing and choices. It's very slim. I mm -hmm. think it's because it's a European brand. And a lot of European-based um, fashion is very slender, sort of slim-fitting and things like that. Yeah. And even in Forever 21, there's not very uh, much selection like the plus size sections or anything like that. And yeah. it's like people are more than one size. Not everybody looks a certain way. Like everybody's different uh, body types and body structures and different shapes. So it's like the people, the, the masses need a more inclusive sort of um, clothing line. Mm -hmm. not, not even a clothing line, but just a depiction of what they're buying in the media. So yeah. do you think that they're setting like a standard for how their customers should look? Definitely. 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 And I think this probably explains why in today's world or today here in New York City here that m big, big, big sizes in like any men or women, they're like really expensive here. And it's like, 
versus the ones with the slim size is like less expensive and that's probably why they, the prices are just going up. They're only bringing this out for the people who look big and the others are who look slim. It's like, why can't they just keep it at an equal, equal price and not just two different prices at once? Like just remain equal and that goes for men and women as well. All, no matter who you are, no matter what shape, it doesn't matter. All right, everything must be equal and not, and not, it has to be all balanced, basically. I agree. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, well, in my opinion, you know, many people may say all women are beautiful, but what specifically makes a woman beautiful to you? What makes a woman beautiful to someone is, you also got to look at the, your beauty expressions and how they do their makeup how they look in their bodies. It's like, like they, they want to be styling out in the street and they just, cause you know, if you see, if you look out into the streets, usually today, there are many like men who usually disrespect women just because of how they look and all that here. And I think we have the image up here and uh, if you want to weigh in, go ahead. Um, it seems like you're putting a lot of emphasis on the outside of the woman the physical beauty of the woman yeah uh but then you have to think you have to remember that not all women look the same so right. if you have a standard of what the woman is supposed to look like does that mean whoever doesn't fit that standard is not beautiful like honestly i feel like a woman should be judged judged based on her character and how she presents herself not just how she looks or how she puts on makeup or what she wears because mm -hmm. exactly. i know like me i don't look like a typical chick well, I'm not saying that, like, cause I'm, try I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to be like, you know, right. oh, show off you or whatever. <laughs> but like, I don't wear a lot of like tight fitting clothing. I don't, I don't like a lot of um, just very monotonous styles. And I feel like that's, that's all the media is saturated with. I like wearing boys clothes. I like doing my hair all weird. I like, <laughs> you know, doing weird stuff. And if I don't look like the people who, uh, who are portrayed in the media, am I supposed to feel less about myself? I don't, I don't mm -hmm. think that's... No, because we're all, we are all created di equally and di but created differently. Like with me, I dress the way I want to dress. Like I'm, the way I'm dressed now, I feel like I feel like I'm dressed sexier than ever <laughs> here, all right? So get that <laughs> together, all right? Personally, I think that a smile looks good on a woman. Mm -hmm. Just say yeah. yeah, we need to see more smiles on ladies more frequently because that brings out their innermost and their character and their more sense of humor because... We're not seeing that these these days here because it's like without the smile, it could also lead to like low energy, you know, it's, it's a fact, though, for sure. I mean, I feel like a lot of women smile like True. smiling is smiling is contagious. Like if I'm smiling right yeah. now, everybody <laughs> is going to start smiling, <laughs> feel me? But like um, I feel like what Naomi was trying to say was that it's um, it's a. Uh, a smile is a gesture that shows that you're comfortable with yourself yeah. right. and comfortable Definitely. with the, the environment that you're in and things like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so have you guys ever seen like an advertisement for a clothing store or any other store that has made you feel bad about yourself or your body weight? Yes, I've s there have been advertisements with Macy's is an example here. There is a typical style clothing that I've wanted to buy, but it but it costs less, but they only had it in a certain available of sizes available, and that would, and that, and that got me mad, because, because they, because you know Macy's, they don't make big and tall as, as much as they do, and that's why, I usually shop at J.C. because you also get the discounts, and they have always have a big and tall selection in perfect styles that you, like to have and that you want to look in, and you know, because this, this is an issue that's still going on today where. As I mentioned, it's there's not much big and tall selections available in stores across the city here or across the nation. Uh, I actually work in a retail store. Mm -hmm. Like every job that I've had w has always been in retail, and um, I just recently left Forever Twenty One, and uh, you know there's Forever Twenty One is sectioned off into different uh, parts and styles, mm -hmm. different fits, and um, it's not so much as uh, the pictures or however the 
the media is portrayed in the store. It's more so if you look at the construction of the actual store, the setup of the store, there's not many uh, variety in things outside of what's hot. So it's like whatever is hot, whatever is trending, that's the biggest section in the store. That's in the front. That's in the windows. That's what, that's what they want people to buy. Yeah. That's what they have the most of. I do the same thing every time when I'm going down 34 Carroll Square or Atlantic Barclays, anywhere in particular. Mm. It's like you, there's this style that you want that you want to buy and it makes you look good, but turns out they don't have it in your size, you know? Um, I don't think necessarily it's that. Or? It's, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> it's a style that you decided you want and you feel like, oh, I'm going to look good in this. This is, this is whatever they're pumping at you. This is, this is, this is what they're pushing towards you. Like, they see all this on the runway. They see all these figures with this certain style, so they're, they're pushing for that. They're mm -hmm. making you want to buy this stuff. They know the tactics, the, uh, the marketing tactics to get you to buy this certain look. <coughs> yeah, because it's all about the money that they're after here. Do you think that these type of advertisements that they pump out like make you think otherwise of shopping about shopping in these stores? Well, <coughs> uh, I feel like not that it makes you think differently. It's just that it has... It, it basically solidifies your mindset of what you want to buy. Like, if you mm. look around, you see, like, everybody wearing Vans now. Not not just any Vans. Everybody's wearing the, the, the black, black Vans, Vans with the white stripe yeah. or whatever. Mm. Like, everybody. <laughs> you wearing, have those on? <laughs> yeah. I had those, too, actually. I'm not going to front. <laughs> um, and everybody's wearing boyfriend jeans. Everybody's wearing, wearing flannel. Wearing sneakers yeah. here. Yeah, or everybody's <laughs> wearing, like, that Coachella garb because Coachella is... Um, now, these are champion sneakers here. Nah, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah they, they they definitely push out a certain image not so much that they change their mind but they set it for you okay. so we've done a lot of research and a study that we found conducted by florida state university and published by the international journal of eating disorders found a group of women well found a group found that a group of women that who were asked to browse Facebook for 20 minutes experienced body dissatisfaction than those who actually spent 20 minutes researching rainforest cats online. Rainforest cats? Rainforest cats. You where heard that right. Where, where can I get a rainforest cat from? <laughs> online. <laughs> um, Claire Mescal, an award-winning author and expert on body image, leadership, and media literacy, explains, while social media is not the cause of low self-esteem, it has all the right elements to contribute to it. Social media creates an environment where disordered thoughts and behaviors really thrive. So, um, have you guys ever gone on social media, like Instagram, Facebook, and compared yourself to other women or men? Yeah. Yeah. Well, with me, it's like, whenever I go on social media and Facebook, and it's like, I'm the one that gets less likes and the other one gets more likes, mm. you know. <laughs> and I just want to eat them up for dinner here, so. <laughs> but. <laughs> I think for me, yeah. you know, I'm a big girl. So mm -hmm. people, they like, like, okay, for example, I don't know if you guys know the model Ashley Graham. She's like um like a lingerie model or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. She's like she's a big girl, and she got a lot of harsh feedback because they were like, people were like, "Oh, like that just looks disgusting. Like, why are you doing that?" Like, and to me, I was like, "She's beautiful in her skin, and if she's confident and feels like, you know, I'm beautiful in my skin, that's something admirable to look at, to like to look up to, not something that you mm -hmm. should go ahead and body shame right. someone who." Like, I would never have the courage to do what she's doing. And to me, mm -hmm. that's a little bit admirable. Back to what Naomi was saying mm -hmm. uh, about Ashley Graham and, and how people were body shaming her for being confident about being herself. Right. You sort of have to, like, th this, this sort of takes you back to, like, the beauty standard that media is portraying and how it's so hard to stray away from it because this is a set conditioning of the mind. It's a set conditioning of the mass, the masses. And... Um, if they see anything outside of that box, they feel attacked. They feel like they they have to maintain that that equilibrium that they had maintained from before and 
push everyone back into that box, push everyone's mind back into that that certain way of thinking. Right. So um, I actually heard, ha- I have heard of Ashley Graham, and I've seen the pictures, and she's she's com- she's gorgeous. Like yeah, of course. She's <laughs> yeah, I see, she is gorgeous. She's yeah. pretty. Do you know any social media accounts that actually combat negative body image? Negative body image. Not that I know of here. Not that I know of either. Um, I kn- I know of a few pro pro black um Instagram accounts. Uh, I can't remember them off the top of the head, but <coughs> the thing was, uh, not just s- well. Uh, color shaming as well yeah. I feel like is also a topic in body image because you know it's it's all about being comfortable in your own skin and um, minorities are often um, either misrepresented or not represented at all in the media and um, so when I had followed those accounts you see pictures of these these beautiful uh, brown and, and black uh, women and children and men and mm-hmm. how they're so confident with uh, their skin, with their ethnicity, with their bodies, and they're very open about um, that confidence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you had to spread a message about body image, what would you say or what hashtags would you use? Um, <coughs> well, because I am a YC producer, <laughs> and you know we're all about empowering the youth and, and uh, mm-hmm. spreading knowledge, uh, I would definitely use hashtag take back the media. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that in itself can definitely be generalized and um, body image and uh, your perspective of um, your, uh, well, hashtag take back the media, I mm-hmm. feel like is definitely a general term and it can be used for a lot of different things uh, in regards to the youth how you see yourself in the media, how you don't see yourself in the media, and what you want to put out there, what you want to see more of. Also, do hashtag feel good about yourself, because mm. there are a lot of people out there that feel good inside and out and based on their character and their humor. We would like to share a video called Look At You by The Body Image Project, where people share their perceptions of their body while reinforcing the idea that you should celebrate every aspect of yourself. Look at these people. Look at them. If each is a song, they all sound remarkably different. And yet, they share something. A relationship. It happens to be our longest lasting, most intimate relationship. The relationship with our own body. So think about your answer to this very simple question. That is a tough question. I don't know, let me see how, if I can even describe it. I don't feel really good or really confident about it. It has a negative connotation. Maybe I think I look fatter and it could just be the window, but I'm not, I don't really have a very good idea of what I look like to other people. And I don't know if I'm actually three or four pounds thinner, I just think that I am. Someone can be pretty, but if they don't believe they're pretty, they don't act pretty. I would say my relationship with my body is um, growing. Imagine a world where you, we, all of us can smile and mean it when we answer that question. Imagine throwing a look into the mirror and loving what you catch in return. Imagine being one healthy whole in both mind and body. And imagine all of your choices coming from an open place with no judgment. Sounds pretty good, right? Before we get there, let's start with how we got here. Growing up, I kind of had a, a distorted view. You're going to be hit with, with fat jokes. She would say, Chanel, you're getting too big. Or um, um, I was surrounded by people who were always trying to be thinner, better, smaller. It, it's, been, it's, been, it's been difficult for me. We stand facing a deceptive enemy, and this enemy has friends. 
We are surrounded by a constant barrage, unrealistic ideals, images that simply aren't possible to attain. Even your own mind can play these tricks. You focus on the few things that reinforce a gloomy story and forget so many of the things that make you, you. Starting today, we celebrate the real you, the mindful you, the beautiful you. Here are some tips to combat negative body images in the media. Focus on your health and well-being no matter what size you are. Help others to develop self-esteem based on the qualities other than physical appearance. And get rid of your scale. Numbers can be deceiving. Listen to your body. Weight is, a measure, is not a measurement of your health or self-worth. Avoid labeling food bad, sinful, or junk food. Label the, labels like this can make you feel guilty or ashamed for eating bad food. Do not encourage or laugh at jokes that make fun of a person's size or body. Many people don't know that you can tell the media what you think about their advertisements, articles, and stories. They do listen. We encourage you to write a letter to the editor of a newspaper, call a TV station, radio station, or newspaper if you feel negatively affected by these sites. Thanks for tuning in to Girls Empowered.